Surfer Ray here with NorCal Bees, and it's the middle of winter, and uh, we're in the wood shop where I love to be in the winter time when I'm not surfing. And uh, what we're doing right now is we're building these three frame mating nukes, and we use these to make nukes as well. And uh, I kind of wanted to shoot this video before I got here and showed you guys how I cut everything, but unfortunately I didn't have anybody to film me, so we're at a stage now that the parts are all done. They've all been dipped and treated with uh, paraffin wax and rosin in my dipping tank, and now we're just assembling the last few boxes. But uh, I'm still going to share with you what I'm going on. So you basically have two sizes of parts. You have a 6 inch and you have a 10 inch. Okay, so everything is going to be cut for me out of plywood. You could cut this out of 1x10s as well and make this whole system out of 1x10s. But I chose to use plywood just because it's cheaper and easier and, uh, and available. And so um, with the dipping, I don't have to worry about it. It lasts, you know, almost forever. Um, and so... It's important to always think about how to get the most pieces out of whatever you're cutting out. If, it, if, it's, a, if it's, it's a one by 10, you gotta figure out how many you can get the most pieces and to be able to cut the knots out or where you want the knots to be, like on the bottom board, not on your edge boards or wherever you have joints, you don't want knots. Of course, with the plywood, we don't have to worry about any of that. So it's just about focusing to get as much as we can out of here. And so, like I said, there's really just the two sizes, six inches, which is your bottom and your top and your side pieces. And these are also 10 inches tall. So what I do before I even make any cut is that I go ahead and I just start calculating how I can get the most pieces if I'm going to make, you know, 10 inch strips or six inch strips, or sometimes it's, it's better to cut them off the edge. It all depends, but you take the time to calculate it out. And then you come out with very little scrap, you know, on this project, I almost had no scrap. I just had a few of these small pieces right here like this and a couple of these, and then some uh, little one inch strips and that's it. And so that's what you want. I'm going to give you a cutoff list. So you'll have all the parts dimensions on this piece of paper so it'll be easy for you to go so let's go through the parts this is your bottom board right here and then this is our lid it's got two little blocks on the end and i also put in this uh i get a spade bit and i drill halfway through and then i get a regular bit and drill all the way through and i use this as a feeder hole and uh, i use jar feeders with a nipple So um, it goes through there and then I cut this out so more bees can get to it and uh, make it easier for them to access. Plus the nipple's too short to go all the way through. This is your side piece, okay? There's two different side pieces. Um, on the bottom it has a, an inch and a half to two inches by three quarters entrance. And on the other one, we have a little three quarter inch um, by half inch vent hole. And as you can see on this, this is your entrance. Back here you have your vent hole, okay? And I always find it important to vent the hives and I like this kind of system, either with the inner cover I do this with the notch or I can put it in like here. And the cool thing is when you put your lid on, you can push it back and that allows air to go you know, down and through the sides. And if I want to close that off, I can just push the lid for it. Now the vent hole's closed off. So it gives me a little bit of freedom to do that. Um, these side pieces, I took a dado and I cut the three sides. They're three quarters by three eighths of an inch. Okay. And you just get a dado and you cut them out. They have handles on each side, on the, you know, on each side of the front and the back. And the handle is positioned I'll let you know when I get the dimensions, but it's, it's low enough to allow that I can stick my hive tool in here in order to pop this lid up. And that way it's easy to get into the, into the, um, the hive instead of trying to wedge it in on the side here. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, start assembling them. I made a jig for that and we'll see what that looks like. All right, here's my jig. I made it out of some scrap plywood. And basically this inside dimension is just a 16th bigger than my end piece. And so that fits in there just like that. I also have one of these handle pieces right here in the back. It's just loose there, but what it, that does is keep it level. 
and then I made it a little bit shorter than the side length of my board. So now I can put my sides in there. I always put this piece in with the bottom facing towards this. So I know that that is always my bottom. Okay, now I flip it around. I know this is the bottom of my, my nuke. All right, we're gonna put some glue here on the top. Don't be cheap with the glue. I use Title Bomb 3. It's supposed to be the best glue. Then I take the other piece, which has the notch, so I know this is the back of my nuke, and I put some glue right on this edge. And then I do the same thing on this side. Don't worry about putting glue here because I got glue on that side. Okay, and I know this is my bottom side. And as you might be figuring out is that there's entrances on both my end pieces. So I made a mistake and I got a little overzealous and I started cutting these notches out on both ends. So I'm having to seal that one side off. So this is actually the back of the box. So then I come along here, you know, I'm, I'm 58 years old and I can't even see that good, but you really don't need to see good when you're assembling pieces. It's all about feel. I can feel when this is a little bit over or under one way or another. So I just make sure it feels smooth on that side. And then I push from both sides in as we go ahead and put in our staple. You can see the glue squishing out. Then we spin it around over here. Make sure this is flush. It's a little bit off, so I push it in a little. And put our staples here. And it's just a matter of pulling this out and flipping it over and doing the same thing on the other side. All right, we got the other side secure in there. Just pop it out. Some more glue. And like I said, I messed up and put the, an entrance on each side. <laughs> I was almost thinking about leaving it that way, but uh, not going to be a good idea. So what I did is I just got a little piece of plastic that I have, and uh, I just close it off like that. Pretty simple, simple fix there. So here's my bottom board. So I know I look down to see my vent holes down there, so I know this is the back end because the bottom board is longer for a landing for the beast to land on and then it's just a matter of uh nailing this off and since we have this hole back here i gotta kind of go on one side and the other and you don't want to go right in the corner where this joint is so i keep my nail a little bit away from that corner um the next thing i do is i check here to see if it's flush which this one is doesn't go in all the way like that we just take the old hammer and put it down so there's a couple things little tricks here that I can share with you if this thing is sucked in too far like sometimes this will be bent in then I have this little piece of wood that's my exact right dimension and I push that in there as you can see and that will push out that side to flush it up and if it's sticking too far out, you know, if it's just a little bit, I can push with my hand. But if it's sticking out a lot, then we just get the clamp here and then we suck it in with the clamp. Um, generally, you know, they're pretty much right on the money. I can manipulate it with my hand. Um, another little trick is if I'm doing the first side over here, is that sometimes, you know, I can just take this board and move it over a little and put a staple and another staple and then start pushing it back as I go. And I can, you know, make it follow that line doing that as well. So I just finish this one up. All right, there you have the three frame nuke the the lid is pretty simple you don't really need to see what i'm doing there I just nail this on the back and like i've already explained with the holes how that works and that's how we have it all right surfer rave norcal bees i also 
took a video of how I dip these and I'll add that in there right, too. Now we're ready to go into the dipping tank. So this is my dipping tank. I keep it around, well I bring it up to about 320 and then um, you can see 320 and uh, this is full of paraffin wax and pine rosin and what happens when we stick the wood in there is that it actually starts boiling and we're going to boil the water out of the wood and suck up the resin and the paraffin into the wood. And I made this little rack here. I put a bunch of pieces in at once. Lock, get a little extra weight. You can see how that foam starts rising right away. So we got to keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't uh, over foam and start flowing over. But I've been doing this, these batches for a while and I know it's not going to over foam. So that's what we're doing now. We leave it in there for 10 minutes and when we're done, we'll pull it out and this is what it looks like. So this wood's going to last, you know, a good 15 years at least if you take care of it. And since these are the three frame mating nukes slash starter nukes, We'll only be using them during the spring and summer and uh, so they're not going to get a lot of weather. I'm sure they're going to last me for the rest of my, my, uh, you know, my lifetime anyway. All right, Surfer Ray with NorCal Bees. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you've seen, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That's what it looks like with the three frames in there and we're good to go. And like I said, I use these for mating queens as well as for starting nukes out.